Devereaux. Mark Devereaux. You're in a whole lot of trouble, you know that, Mr. Devereaux? Hey, I, I couldn't help it. I didn't have any choice. I, I was doing it for everybody. For this whole planet. Mm-hmm, sure. No, you gotta believe me. I, I mean, the way these things have loused up everybody's life. We know all about that, Mr. Devereaux. We just haven't seen a human being working with them until you came along. Working with them? Yes, working with them. Why else would somebody do what you did? Crazy. I had a perfectly great life before they came. Yeah. So did most people. We just didn't realize it. I used to. Game shows, cop shows, commercials. My wife said I was wasting my time writing this kind of stuff. I don't know, there's something about Hollywood that gets into your system. It's not the glamour and the excitement. It's the people. They're real. They're open. They're there for you. The day that it happened, I was doing some music for a new cop show, Transfer to Danger. It's about this detective who's had his driver's license revoked. Instead of car chases, he does it all with public transit. It's not easy doing the music for a bus chase. You have to go with a medium tempo kind of thing.
Dan. Thank God I found you. Well, I need some theme music. Yeah, what kind of show is it? It's called The Wedding Bell Game. Huh? See, uh, we get three couples on there. You know, sweet, a little kooky, not too kooky. And they're all after this uh, wedding ring. The ring? The thing is that we marry them off right there on the show while the girl is still, like, dripping with the mud. Mud? Yes, mud. What? You think I'm giving this stuff away? The girl has to go through a pool of mud uh, to get to the ring. You know, a tiny, tiny swing bikini. And, and you know, the, the guys are, like, uh, uh, yelling out clues from the sidelines, and the girls are, are clawing through the Stand. mud. Oh, you wouldn't believe that. This is Bix Beiderbeck doing in a miz. The first pressing. This is, this, this is incredibly valuable, all right? Wow. More than CDs? Yes. But it's, like, so big. <laughs> So, what do you think of the show? Stan, it sounds inspired. Yeah. I'll yeah. Uh, get to it next week. Uh, uh, next week? I, I was kind of hoping, you know, maybe this weekend you and I could... No, it's got to be next week. Uh, I got the shot at doing this movie, finally. The science fiction picture that Joe Fluttermouse is directing. Oh, that is, that is terrific. Yeah. Fluttermouse, he, he did the one uh, where the, the aliens come in the UPS packages? I, I saw that on cable. Uh, you know, I hear he's kind of an asshole, but, but I am thrilled for you, thrilled. Oh, God, I gotta get out of here. Oh, you'll get it. That is so great. That is so... Is that one of Sarah's? Yeah, yeah, she still does a little painting when she can find the time. Mm. You know, this painting speaks to me because uh, I have eaten things that look like that. Capriccio in D minor by Carl Ditters von Dittersdorf. Uh, Jerry, here's what I've come up with for the car chase music. Uh, give me an arrangement of this with lots of brass and use the timpani like we do in the opening. Da 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 boom dun. Just being by myself, driving. It's kind of, I don't know, inspiring. I was a little nervous going for my meeting with Joe Fluttermouse. If I got a job writing a score for a real movie, it would be a big break for me. Fluttermouse was only 22, but he was the hottest director in town. He started out with a horror movie about a family whose car is repossessed by the devil. Then he went to Family Appeal, a picture about an enchanted dwarf from the future who teaches a drug dealing street gang how to care. It was a smash. I was up to this meeting, and I wasn't ready for anything to interfere with it. the music is really crucial. Uh, uh, sweetheart, can we have the suit over here? The, the beings are coming out. Beings? Uh, yeah, in, in the film we always refer to them as beings because I find aliens to be very distancing. Here he is. Here's my little fella. Who's your daddy? Mm. Careful, it's very expensive. Well, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, he's, uh, he's uh, cute. Yeah, I know. I designed him myself. Now, the music has to be this beautiful greeting. Um, it's the universal handshake between the worlds, you know? Kind of a ceremonial thing. Yeah, I have I'll an idea. I'll tell you idea. what I told the actors, the ones who were there when the beings got off. It's like, here come these guys, and they're like Buddha, Christ, Khalil Gibran, all rolled into one. But what do they really want? Just to be scritched behind their fuzzy little ears. <laughs> <laughs> Music for people to crawl through mud by? How much longer are you going to write this stuff? It hasn't been that long. Oh, I like it Personally, I liked it better when we were playing with these guys. I thought you said they were junkies. Well, they weren't junkies, but at least they didn't make everybody crawl around in the mud. Yeah, we couldn't even afford a place in town. Living out there in the cabin all cramped. 
He likes being cramped, remember? Yeah. Hmm. Cramped and starving. Those were the days. Do I have any clean socks? What are you packing for? To go out to the cabin and work on this science fiction thing. Well, why don't you write it here? Honey, you know that that's my place out there. That's where I, you know, I get inspired. I have to, you know, be alone, concentrate. All these game show themes just don't come off the trees, and you have to go to work. Yeah. Bring eventually. all those nuts for Jane. Oh. What are you doing? Well, I think I should help you clear your mind. Are you put that? Dr. Jane, this is Paula in Reseda. Yes, Paula. What can we help you with this evening? Dr. Jane, I think the man at the shoe store that I go to, I think he hates me. I think he wants to harm me physically. Paula, when did you first start to have this feeling? When he said, I hate you and I'm going to harm you physically. I'm going to put you on with Dr. Jane after the next commercial. Yes, I am. Well, I said I would, and I'm going to. You can trust me. Well, why don't we take some deep breaths? So I'll do them with you, okay? Emphysema? Oh, well, I'm sorry. Why don't we take some uh, shallow breaths? You know, Paula, the boys' markets have everything you need to make Arbor Day extra special this year. Arbor Day? Yes, Paula. You know, a meatloaf in the shape of a tree is surprisingly festive. Okay, Nut, what's your problem? Sarah? Sarah, that, that, uh, Spider Mouse picture, I've come up with a theme for you. I want you to hear it. You're gonna love this. It's the most original. I can't talk now. Listen to this. Listen to what? Hi, I got a show to you. Are you Dr. Jane? I've got to talk to her. Uh, no, I'm not. That's Dr. Jane. That is her, isn't it? <laughs> yes, that's her, and she is very, very busy. Okay, and then when the aliens come out of their spaceship, there's this part. Why don't you tell me how you got in here and what happened to our guard? Oh, I, I, I think I missed. I did miss that. Yeah. I missed. Just let me put this call on hold and I'll be right with you, okay? <laughs> Okay, now this is where the organ comes in. Listen to this. It's this big organ that just sweeps you away. Yes. Now, tell me more about this organ. What's your problem? Well, I'm planning to mass murder a whole a, a, a bunch of people. <laughs> Why is that? Well, well, that way my neighbors will be interviewed on TV. And, and you know what neighbors always say. <laughs> I can't believe it. He's such a nice guy. He's the last guy I think that's ever do anything like that. <laughs> well, my neighbors have never said anything nice about me. Ask your visitor to leave. There's music. Um, I am going to give you a private consultation with Dr. Jane. Oh, 
And I'm going to set one up for you in just like a year and a half, as soon as you sit down right there. Okay? <laughs> what do you think, huh? Sarah? Sarah? Are you there? Sarah? That's just classic. Finally write something decent and there's nobody there to listen. Let's look at why the neighbors don't say anything nice about you. <laughs> Do you mow your lawn? Oh, I'm, I mow all the time. But I, I, I don't uh, uh, edge. <laughs> <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Mr. Kornhauser, mm. you know, mowing without edging... If you ask me, I think that looks even worse than not mowing at all. Really? Do you have an edger? Well, well I have a, 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 a weed, 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 weed whacker. You have a weed whacker, but you do not use well, that, your weed I, I, whacker. I don't like to call it that. I, it's, no, I don't like to say it's yes, a weed, weed, weed. You have trouble with the name. Well, yeah, I do. Yeah. Is it the whacker? No, it's, well, it's not. The it's, weed. Well, it's both. You know, we, we, it doesn't, but it's kind of. The whole thing. Uh, yeah, but it's nicer when you say it, you know? Mm. It's nicer when you, but I. It, it. So until tomorrow night, this is Dr. Jane saying be centered, mm. be yourself, mm. and above mm. all, have the courage mm. to share mm. those feelings. I love this place. Get up! Get up! It's 5.30 in the morning. What is with you and the sleep deal? Are you finished? Who are you? You call yourself a host? Some guy comes 46 million miles to see you. You're drunk on your ass. There's hardly any vodka left. What are you? Mr. Congeniality. Get out of here before I call the cops. Like you're a model citizen? All right, come on. Knock it off. All right? Show me what you got here. Got? Put a flight of mouse picture. It's your last shot, pal. You blow this one, you spend the rest of your life ripping off chase music from what you hear on the radio. Is that the lowest? I, I borrowed one little phrase from Von Dittersdorf, all right? Borrowed? How are you going to give it back to him? He's dead. How do you know about all this stuff? I'm a Martian. We know everything. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, it's a joke, right, huh? Somebody put you up to this, didn't they? Huh? Stan Garrett? Uh, okay, I'm laughing, all right? The joke's on me. Ha, ha, ha. What are you, some kind of Martian telegram or something, huh? You want a tip here? Now, come on, take this and get the hell out of here. You're cheap. You tip cheap. I'm all over you, pal, like a bad shirt. I like that shirt. I'm really not in the mood for this. Let's not kick a dead horse, okay, huh? The joke's over. I want you out of here. Come on. All right, time to go. Come on. Come on, up and out. Let's go. Come on. Thanks a lot. Congratulations, Mark. You just passed our little test. A what? Passed our test. A lot of other people might have resorted to some senseless violence. Hello? They might have reached in this drawer and... Pulled out this gun. But not you. You see, we people on Mars have a lot to share with you guys. But we just can't trust it to anybody. See what I'm saying? You really are from Mars, aren't you? Mark, I know this is difficult for you to accept. You just got up. You're drunk. You're in very bad clothing. But hey, that's not important now. Mark, your civilization is very powerful. So powerful, it's a danger to itself. Poverty, pollution, starvation, nuclear wars. These things are unheard of on Mars. We want to help you build such a civilization right here on Earth. Really? Hell no! I was bullshitting! Mars is a dump! And you bought it! Oh, I can't believe how stupid you are. All right, that does it. I want you out of here right now.
Mark, I'm sorry. Guns don't work on us. Give me that. And, uh, please, put this down before you really hurt someone. Okay, Mr. Man from Mars. Give me your best shot. Hop out. Ooh, that has got to hurt. Uh, uh. Oh, Mark, I'm having a wonderful time. But you should go home now, because a burglar is just about to break into your place and steal everything. I don't believe you. You didn't believe us from Mars either, Mr. Skeptical. Mr. No More Very Valuable Record Collection. Mr. Forgets the Floss. Mr. Cheats at Solitaire. Mr. If the guy really was a Martian, and if he was telling the truth, I had to get home. I didn't know it then, but... That was the day the Martians first appeared. Everywhere. Dans votre chambre. Il y a un homme vert, un martien vert. Ça n'a pas d'importance. La vie est devenue une farce cruelle. Il n'y a plus d'émotion, seulement de l'amertume. Oui, mais il s'agit maintenant d'une farce cruelle avec des hommes verts. Ah oui, c'est vrai. And this green dude shows up in my van. <laughs> Look, this is too much heaviness for one day. Look, I don't want to hear anything more about little green men from Mars. You got that? Police who see HP out there. I was hoping against hope that it was all some kind of crazy dream. But then I heard the reports on the radio. Early estimates indicate there may be as many as one billion space invaders. One billion? One billion? Ha! Ah, that is a lot. Get out of my car! Oh, man! That was a new paint job! You wrecked my car! You told me I had to get back, and then you wrecked my car! You know, I may not be that close friend you've been looking for. He's yelling. And he is spitting. He is spitting and yelling. Yo! Hey, Ace, forget this junk. The good stuff's in there. Who are you? I'm cool. That's all you need to know. So what do you say? Let's hit the cabinet. Ah, contraire, my friend, rare old records. 500 bucks a shot, easy. All right. Oh. Cool, thanks. Wait a minute. Are you from space? Oh, I'm from Mars. So, for me, this, <laughs> this is space. Whoa. This is space. we do is we fence the stereo. You know anybody for that on this planet? Yeah, I got a guy. I use him all the time. There's cops here. I thought you said it was cool. Jesus, you're right. Hey, we better blow, pal. Follow me. Shit. Bitch, you're stealing my Shit. records. Stay cool. He was right. Hey, nobody needs to get hurt. Stay cool. You're gonna get hurt, you little... Someone claiming to be a man from Mars. And now, live from MacArthur Park. 
Hiya, folks. It's great to be here on the planet Earth. You know, planet Earth wasn't our first choice, but you ever tried to book a room on Pluto? I, I just saw one of those guys. He was in here. You know, we wanted to get here in time to see the dinosaurs, but the traffic was murder. They're what everywhere. Is there, an audience or a hologram? A guy travels a couple of million miles. You try to tell people a few jokes. You look at him like he's from Mars. Hey, fix the damn thing, will you? Galaxy? I need a ride home after the show. Yeah, yeah, what is it, kid? But the Vikings only went to Mars and said there was no... Guess I need a doctor. There's life there. It's not as good as life on the planet Earth, but I can't work here. I don't have a green card. <laughs> hey, hey the bandages and stuff, I can fix that. <laughs> no. No, yeah, really. My brother showed me how. He's in jail. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, partner. Now I talk okay, to in the bathroom. Well, they just talk till they run out of breath. Take a breath, have an egg roll, shut up, pal. But you know, folks, and for that couple on the go, we have a pair of his and hers Helix motor scooters from Honda, the finest in small, shiny vehicles for both sexes. This plus fabulous skis, tennis rackets, and a whole lot more. All this can be yours if you win, Mrs. Henderson. Watching TV can't hurt that bad. This is my show. I mean, I wrote the music for this show. Just trip into a game for that play. What's my price? I always thought that was by Von Bitter's door. No, I... To eliminate the chance of coaching, we have placed Mrs. Henderson into a soundproof <laughs> booth. If it's soundproof, why are you whispering? I wouldn't believe the guy unless he yelled, Soundproof booth! This is the fattest lady we've ever had on the show! She's a pig! She's got her own zip code. She's her own voting district. She's blocking the driveway. When she goes to Kentucky Fried Chicken, she licks... Everyone fingers! Hello, That's man. the guy who woke me up this morning. Yeah, weird, man. Tell me about it. You know, to them, we're from space. Pizza, nachos, leche, dairy products, free food for, let's say, some fat lady who can hear me. She'd be out like this. You don't get that fat by giving up free food. Go away. You're ruining the game. Millions of people look forward to this. Millions? Why'd you settle for millions? Why'd you send this thing through the roof? Why'd you give the people what they really want? I know what I really want. I don't want the appliances. I don't want the Skyway luggage. You know what I want? You know what I want? I want the freak! I want the freak! Give me the freak! We could destroy our whole way of life. You mean they're like invaders? I got the freak! Invaders can be dealt with, Donnie. These guys are tourists. I knew I had to get rid of them. How come? Martians knew everybody's secrets. You tried to lie or just make an excuse or cheat a little bit on your taxes. They'd tell. It was like being invaded by people in your fourth grade ethics textbook. Somebody had to stop them. Why not me? You had a plan? No, not yet. I knew I had to do it. People like Sarah's boss, Dr. Jane, they were, they were always talking about everyone being open and honest all the time. <laughs> now they're about to find out what it'd really be like. She fell. Good afternoon. Voice print security. Please state your name and the computer will check your entry authorization. Uh, this is Mel Ben Knudsen. I, I have an appointment with Dr. Jane. You are Mel Hick Ben Knudsen and you are very late for your appointment with Dr. Jane. Interrupt our program to bring you this news bulletin. Panic is spreading in Los Angeles because of bizarre rumors of an outer space invasion. Ah! Invasion? Give me that microphone! That's one of them! <laughs> That's what they sound like! Then I really did see it. Wait a minute. <laughs> How do we know we're all hearing it right now? It's not an invasion, it's a convention! Half the guys wanted to go to Vegas, the other half wanted Hawaii, so we said, what the hell? Let's book the whole planet! <laughs> Mr. Knudsen, you're late. I had to cancel your appointment. Look! I've got to see Dr. Jane right away. I'm sorry, go. No, I was there first. Well, I've been waiting for an hour. Uh, that's just not fair. Just sit down. It'll be fine. Um, I'll get him out of there. Just um, sit down. Now, what can we help you with today? Dr. Jane, it's these green men from Mars. Oh, God, not another one. Where? No, no, Mr. Knudsen, I meant not another patient coming in talking about men from Mars. This 
is a case of mass delusion. But he was in my hydro spa. Exactly. And you felt guilty and you fantasized a man green with envy. Hey! Oh, oh my God! Hey, big guy. How's it going? Hey. Uh, you mean... Ah! Ah! Is that what you're trying to say? Hey, you're here to see Dr. Jane, right? Right? <laughs> Dr. Jane, she's real smart, huh? I hope she's smart. I got a lot of problems. Mr. Knudsen, try and see the other person's point of view. Take some time to scratch and sniff the roses. But the Martians! Mr. Knudsen, I'm not letting you in the door again! Oh. oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jane. He barged right past me. There was nothing I could do. Now, all of these people coming in talking about men from Mars. Now, you have got to start screening the patients more carefully. Well, Jane, what if they're right? What are you here for? Well, I've been in therapy for several years. I have a problem in making connections with people. It's as if I drive them away. Huh? You're a nut. That's your problem. Would it bother you if I did this? <laughs> Yeah, see, it bothered you, didn't it? It bothered you. You're probably psychotic, huh? He's psychotic. <laughs> Look at this. Point. <laughs> you do. Point. Yeah, don't you worry. You're going to feel much better after a little talk. Thank you. Ah. Yes. Who's next? I am. <gasps> what in this world? I came to talk to you, Dr. Jane. You like talking to people, don't you? She sees him too. Well, Dr. Jane, that is a Martian, isn't it? Dr. Jane, if that's not real, I need much more medication. Shut up! <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like so many people talking at once. Oh, I get so, you know, freaked out. It's been going like this ever since I got here. Got here, yes. Where are you from? Mars? You think that's significant? Like maybe my life is being marred or something? Ah, uh, yes. I hear you saying you feel alienated. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're experiencing now. Yes. But then lately, I've been worried about you, Dr. Jane. About me? Mm-hmm. It's just you help so many people. And people have so much confidence in you. And I keep worrying that people might find out things. You step into my office, please. No. I think this is something I'd like to share with the group. That's okay. <laughs> I mean, what about the time you got caught plagiarizing your doctoral thesis? And all your diplomas! Thanks! And the five years you spent as Madame Zenobia, bomb reader and mystic advisor. It's like you never really want to share your past, but yet you talk about being open. <laughs> well, I'm afraid people might think you're a quack, a fake, a fraud, a phony. <laughs> All right. Let's cut the crap, you piece of crud. I'm going to tear you into so many crummy little green pieces. Sue you for malpractice. Malpractice? Hell! This is important. Stop twitching! You son of a bitch! <laughs> you. You helped her. I hope you're proud of yourself. I didn't know. You suspected? Well, well, you suspected she used to be a gypsy fortune teller, didn't you? A little bit. Remember when she used to look at this thing right before she called her stockbroker? Huh? A little tip off here, wouldn't you think? If you would have listened to your suspicions, you could have been with Mark right now at his apartment with the burglar where he got shot. Mark? A burglar? Shot? Uh, yes, a dangerous psychotic burglar. I'm busy here. I'll get over there as soon as I can. Oh, my God. Thank you. Oh, my God. Ah. Oh, man. Oh. It's going to be fine. You might want to break into a drugstore steal some coding. Just don't put any stress on it. I wouldn't try and jimmy any windows next couple of weeks. I need a drink. Sure, I got it all right here. Give me the vodka. Man. I don't know, man. It's going to be pretty tough breaking in a place with these Martian guys always coming around. Oh. I really wasn't doing too good at it anyway. I kept getting caught and stuff. 
I wanted to make it big, man. You know, I wanted to be hot. I wanted to be a gentleman burglar. You know, go to those really fancy parties, wear a tuxedo, hobnob with those beautiful, glamorous women, and go upstairs, steal all their jewelry. Like Ruffles. That's Raffles. Ruffles is a potato chip. Hey, what do you do for work, man? I write music. For TV shows. No lie? You know that Lisa Bonet? No. You know Vanna White? I met her once, but... We didn't have anything to say to each other. He's one of them. Lisa! Johnny. Woo! Yeah! The new fall season looks great, doesn't it? I wouldn't want a job in TV right now. Mm-mm. No way. Couldn't pay me. Well, maybe a talk show. The Martian Downey Jr. show? Oh, yeah. Yeah. People are always going to watch TV. Anyway, I'm not worried. I've got stocks, bonds. You see that? You can't push this guy around. You're okay, Mark. <laughs> You're great! I really admire it when you people invest. You're okay, big guy. You're set for the future, whatever it may bring. Put on Channel 3 for the guy, okay? We better keep an eye on your holdings. On Wall Street, a tumultuous day. I thought we had some film of that. <laughs> that is not the film. It seems we're having some problems in our control room because of the uh, alleged Martians. There we are. Like I said, a tumultuous day on Wall Street as the Dow Jones average of 30 industrial stocks plunged more than 1,500 points in the wake of an apparent invasion from outer space. It seems the alleged Martians stood in the backs of elevators and started disastrous rumors, many of them true. It was the worst day in the market's history. <laughs> Elsewhere around the world today, cities ground to a halt as hysterical citizens... <laughs> and now, a look at the real news behind the TV2 news department. <laughs> Executive producer Eric Johansson and this anchor woman, Eric, Karen Dean, Eric, tour to Paris Eric. now in its third action-packed week shows no signs of slow. Yeah, I know that guy. He's from Mars. Really? I've got some action footage from room Eric. five at the Petition Motel. He looks good. Right now. He looks good, doesn't he? A farm setting, such as the one you see here, would be an excellent place for Eric and Karen's next outing. Especially in light of Karen's growing number of fantasies concerning barnyard animals. Sue! Wait! Sue! Wait! Let's see. What kind of music would you write to go with here? Maybe like... The woman next door. She's getting out of the shower. She's naked. I've got to talk to her. It's important. I gotta go too, Mark. Thanks for the drink. Hey, you gonna be using that cop car anymore? If you're not, could I, like, borrow it? Thanks, man. Unreal. Hey, Mark, you know those guys you were talking about on TV, that Eric guy and that chick wants to do it in the barn? Do you know them? Do you know anybody famous? Well, I'm just gonna take off. Take it easy, man. I was broke, I was shot, and my car was a wreck. I didn't realize it at the time, but things were about to get a lot worse. Mr. Spot! Ah! How about a hand? Yeah! <laughs> My, my boyfriend lives in there, and, and there's been a robbery. He's been shot. The, the burglar's a psycho. Ma'am, ma'am, it's okay. Calm down, relax. I just checked it out. Everything's fine. Who 
told you that, a Martian? Well, yes. Don't ever listen to those guys. That burglar wasn't a psycho. He's a hero. Yeah, that got little guy saved his boyfriend's life. Oh, God. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, 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 Mixed couple. Did the burglar do that to you? Oh, a cop shot me. The burglar, he fixed me up. But it, it's, uh, it's okay now. Oh, it's God. Right. Mark, you could have been killed. I could have lost you. Oh, honey, I, I've nearly died seven times since this morning. Ever since those pain-in-the-ass Martians showed up here. Oh. Oh. I guess they're really bad, huh? Bad? Have you met any of them yet? Yeah. Yeah, they're kind of obnoxious, but I, I kind of like the way that they handle Jane. Yeah, well, they're bad, all right. Oh, I don't know what's going to happen. They wiped out our life savings. Oh. I guess I have to deal with that now. I'm just trying to write a little of this theme music for Stan Garrett. Mark, you're hurt. You shouldn't be working. Yeah, but if, if I don't work, I'm going to be hurt and starving. It's just a few bars. I just have to figure this out. The wedding would you stop it? Who gives you the right? We can't stand for anybody to have any fun, can we? Reminds us of our own lackluster existence, doesn't it? Oh, you know, I think it's a little bit professional jealousy. You can't deal with it if someone else has a hit record. Yeah. Just get out of here. Wait, 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 wait. You need some, some quiet to concentrate on, on the work that he's trying to do. Oh, oh. oh. I didn't realize something. You're what right. Thinking? You're right. You, you people are artists. Uh, I mean, if you look around, you'd see... Uh, oh, God! Uh, that sucks. Oh, gross. What is that? I painted that. Yeah. Ha! Ooh, this is gross. Well, it's kind of postmodern food, I think. Where are the dynamics? Where are the colors? You don't like green, but... No, no, no. Green. Green. Yes, green. Green. Yes. Not, Not that green. green. The Martians stayed at our place for hours, playing records. Giving Sarah a hard time about her hard work, eating clam dip. But I managed to finish the theme music anyway. I wasn't gonna let any Martians wreck my life. Next morning, I got up, put on some clean clothes and a fresh bandage, and I went to see Stan Garrett. Stan? Okay? Yeah. What happened here? They looted the set. That's what happened here. Ooh. The Martians put them up to it. They, they, took, they took the Amana Touchpadic radar radio. They took the Skyway luggage. They took everything. For, first they looted the set of Live for the Money. And then they went over and looted the set of the... The Bolivia show, uh, eat, my, eat lunch. my lunch, and and then they looted the set of dueling for dollars, you know, with the sword. And then they came over here and looted the set. Oh, was that twice? Mark, who would believe that people could be that greedy? Stan, that's, that's terrible. Yeah. I have something that might make you feel better, huh? I finished that theme. What theme? For the wedding bell game, huh? See? 
I was wondering if you could give me a little advance on this, you know. I mean, after you listen to it, of course, it's it's kind of like the Martian hop, you know. Mark. Do, 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 Mark. The little thing at the end. Mark. Do, 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 Mark, there isn't, there isn't going to be any wedding bell game. There isn't going to be any anything. We're ruined. After a few weeks, people everywhere were adjusting to the Martians, if you could call it that. The places where people used to have fun and get away with stuff were deserted. About the only thing to do is have a drink and ignore them, or try to. In other news, the president is expected <laughs> to make a... The president is expected! Jeez, I better get dressed! To make a major address. What would now a the... major want with a dress? On a worldwide TV hookup concerning the Martian president. Presents for us? You shouldn't have! How sweet! Will you shut up? Shut, shut up. up! You're talking to my buddy! You're talking to my pal! Yeah, we got freedom Will of Will you turn mind. that thing right. down, please? Don't break! Break? I'll give you a break! I'm sick of Martians. Pre-Martian tapes? Pre-Martian tapes, buddy? Pre-Martian tapes? What do you got? Well, uh, let me see, I got, uh... Dennis! Mark! Hey, how's it going? Uh... Hey, can I interest you in a tape? What do you got? Oh, God, I got, uh, Lakers games before the Martians were hanging on the hoops, uh... I got rock and roll without the Martians playing the accordions, uh, all news. Uh, how much are these? Twenty bucks a piece. Oh. I'm down to my last five. Oh, what the hell. Take two for old time's sake. Oh, thanks. Hey, you're gonna love these, um... You know, the announcers are nice and calm. Uh, you can even get the news. Yeah? Yeah. Well, enjoy. Yeah. I'll see you around. Think anybody still wants their palm free? Well, I don't know. Ah, uh, you will meet an obnoxious green stranger. Oh, I know. Terrific. People are pretty hard up. But, Jane, I want you to know something. I was never on to you. No. No, I thought you were crazy. But I thought you were sincere, too. Well, thank you. That means a lot to me. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, this is mine. Did I give this to you? No, I don't think so. Well... Do keep in touch. Mm. Good thing while it lasts. This is Voice Print Security. State your name and the computer will check your entry authorization. Yes, it's Dr. Jane. Oh, it's me! Oh, my God. Dr. Jane Buchanan, open the door, please. No, no, this is me. Open the door, please. I'm in a hurry. Your voice print does not match. Well, of course it doesn't. Quit screwing around! I own this building! Don't mess with me! It's a Martian. There is no tenant named Marcia registered here. You cannot be admitted. Can you believe the nerve? Can't even get into our own goddamn building! Oh! Now look what you've done! We want our cleaning deposit now! Oh, my. We should just be bums, huh? <laughs> just stay in bed all the time. Now you're talking. Don't mind us, folks. Go on ahead. Oh, she's got a real quality, don't you think? I'm <laughs> curious about this, you know. What the hell is this? Research. Research. Therapy. 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 Mark, you know, I, I don't think I can. I can't <laughs> Is there no decency anymore, huh? Oh, hello. Hello, I'm Jane Buchanan. I used to be Sarah's boss. I thought she might be here. Oh, yes, that's one of Sarah's dear little painting food. She's always painting food. Well, I'm, I'm locked out of my place. Well, not locked out exactly. The goddamn Martians. Okay, if I stay here tonight. Oh, hey, oh ah. thank you. Perfect, perfect. I will flop right here on this couch. You won't even know I'm here. Well, 
Sarah here? No, oh, no, I'm not the guy. I'm Donnie. I'm a burglar. No, oh, oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a gentleman. I'm a gentleman burglar. I'm, I'm, please. May I? Please. Come on, guys. Give me something here. We don't live here. Relax. We're scientists. This is research. Just one favor. Can she put these on? <laughs> oh, get the hell out of here right now! This is safe sex. Oh. I just need a place to stay. Oh. And, uh, see, I don't have any money. And, uh, I can't get anything going with these Martian guys always coming around. No kidding. I mean, what's their pitch, anyway? Now, if they wanted me to cut them in on what I've got going, I could get that. I think that what they want is just for everybody to be really honest and to say what they're really feeling. God, I hate people like that. Come on, come on, baby, you can turn the lights on. The lights? Yeah. 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 Can you see okay? Mark, can you move a little bit? Oh, is yeah. that his leg? That's one of those. Those feet are those. Those are my feet. Oh. Stop with the touching. Stop! a lot to talk about. We do? We better. There's only one couch. Come on over here. Okay. Actually, we've got a lot in common. <clears throat> we do? Two hustlers with nobody to hustle. Yeah, a scam on, didn't you? I bet it was something heavy. Mm. Kid, I made Ivan Boski look like Mother Teresa. Oh, you were doing those sex change operations? Well, we don't have to talk. Look, you know, I think I know what the problem is. Why don't you just make believe we're not here? You won't notice us at all. Because we need intimacy. And in order to have intimacy, we need privacy. Maybe some of them do it by explaining it. Maybe they're doing it right now. Maybe the older ones don't even do it anymore. Older ones? Older ones? Oh, come on. Get off the sheet. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll show you. No, I mean, you know, for a living. Wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it. You guys don't do this, do you? Oh, you do. But not physically. Yeah. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, well, that's your problem, you little green horny toad. You want to watch? Yeah, you don't mind. We'll give you something to watch. Do you? No. <laughs> well, you can just eat your little green heart. So they broke up your intimate evening. It's not like they were going around with ray guns or anything. We didn't have any ray guns. Those joy buzzers are pretty bad. Say, how long are you guys going to keep me in here anyway? We'll ask the questions, Mr. Devereaux.
We all make the lifestyle decisions, Mark. If I could find a way to get out of here, then maybe I can figure what out. What is that, some kind of code? I said if I could find out what they were doing here, maybe I could figure out a way to get rid of them. I couldn't sleep after all that, so I turned on the TV. There are all kinds of people on there with all kinds of theories about the Martians. Tomorrow night, when the president will address a worldwide television audience concerning the ongoing Martian situation, we might finally get some answers. These Martians are the great beast predicted in the book of Revelation. Your mother sorts socks in hell. The Martians do not exist. They are a mass hallucination brought about by the hysterical fear of nuclear war. All of these threats about nuclear war and nuclear warfare have given people a nuclear neurosis. What is it with you people? It's nuclear, not nuclear. You've got the easiest language in the entire solar system, and you keep screwing it up. Invest in a dictionary, Schmendrick. The Institute of Scientopathy has known for years that extraterrestrials would be visiting the Earth. Their arrival is living proof that we've been right about everything for years. By controlling the breath, through the practice of kundalini yoga, the Martians can be banished to the realm of the unseen. Since an estimated one billion Martians appeared here on Earth on a Saturday morning three weeks ago at 6.17 a.m. Pacific time. At Dodger Stadium today, the Dodgers set a new league record for errors. 617 blunders. Uh, let's get some meat. You know you're not as dumb as you act. Yeah, I am. Really, I am. There's somebody down here. These days, there's always somebody. Huh. Oh, wait. It's people. Huh? What's going on here? Mark! Oh, hello, Sarah. James, that's my boss. Hello. Hello. What are you doing here? Who's that? That's Donnie, my burglar. You look like that cop. Well, my brother's with the police. Right now. Uh. The Martians locked me out of my place. The kid here let me in. Well, why don't I go see about getting everybody some breakfast? I, you guys don't have any more food. Yeah, that's because you ate everything. Looks like a horde of locusts went through the kitchen. Yeah. Um, last night, did, did, did you two interface? Sarah, the kid is over 18. There's only one couch. That's life. Was there anyone sort of like looking on? Um, uh, some Martian guys, yeah. What, do you let them? Well, actually, I think it sort of added an element. Really? What do you mean, really? It's not, it's, I liked it, man. They give you pointers and stuff. Yeah, well, I don't need any pointers in that department. Well, that's not what they said. Ah, uh, yes, well, I'm starving. Do you know where we could score some breakfast? Say, that's a good idea. Oh, look, here's your shoes. There's a place right down on the corner that hands out day-old croissants to the homeless. Perfect. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Is this yours? Yeah. Donnie, maybe you could help me break into my building. Sarah, ta-ta. Ta. You know, you gotta hand it to Jane. She's such a survivor. She can adapt to anything. Yeah, well, some things you shouldn't have to adapt to. If you want to live like human beings, you have to fight for it. Laboratory mice have sex with electrodes all over them. We're not mice, Sarah. It's been three weeks, Mark. There's no Martians around. Mm -hmm. We're all alone now. Good. 
Wait a minute. This is important. This means something. Something I saw on the TV tonight. This guy said that the Martians appeared everywhere, all over the world, at 6.17 a.m. our time. But that's not when mine appeared. No. Mine? Well, aren't we getting a little possessive, Mr. First Dibs? There ain't no ring on my finger. I'm not your wife. Although I do find you very attractive, I'll deal with that. I remember what you said. It's 5.30, wake up. Only 5.30, now why me, huh? Why was I the first? You get up early. That's right. If we could only unlock this terrible riddle, then we'd know why they've come. Think, Mark, think. You're really getting out of line here, fella. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5 times 30 is 150. 150. Does that mean the Martians would have to live here for 150 years? Would you shut up? 150 years? I'm not ready to leave in 150 years. I just got here. I like to relax, get to know the town, maybe buy some shirts. You see, they're trying to distract me. They know that I'm on to something, huh? You know that I'm on to something, don't you? But, but why would they come to me first? Because you're tall. No, no, no. It's... The music. That director, Joe Flatermouse, said that it, it should be a message of understanding across the galaxy. It, it should bridge the gap. The music that you played to me over the phone? It went out over the radio. Yeah? It, it was the greeting. Oh, please. Are we to believe that one billion Martians are waiting around for some hack Canadian composer to, to write some science fiction music so we can visit his planet? I am not Canadian. Well, you know, if that's our level of bad taste, why don't I just pick up some black velvet Elvis paintings while I'm here? Ah! Some guy in Trenton, New Jersey. He has a theory that Martians are magnetic fields. You no, know, we should go to his house and stick to his refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got to go. Got to go. Good luck on that whole music deal. We loved it. We'll see how much they like it when I get rid of them. I'm going to Washington. Brian, what, what do you think? Uh, which looks more presidential, the blue or this one? Blue. Really? Kind of like a red. It's close. It's very close. The red is more powerful. Yeah, I think so. Tom, get rid of this. Open. Closed. Closed? This is the monitor here. Of course, in those days, uh, people thought it impossible that Two someone seconds. of my... Fellow Americans. To speak not only to you, but with our guests from the planet Mars. Friends from Mars, if you're listening, we realize now why you've come to our planet. You got a burning need inside to find a man who's trying to hide. He's over there and he's easy to reach. He's over there, he's over there, right there, he's over there, right there, he's over there, over there, over there. He's over there, right there, he's over there, over there, right there. He's over there, he's over there, over there. Backwards. I should have played it backwards. So that's how I got in here. Can you expect us to believe all that? Nice try, pal, but no sale. You disrupted a major presidential speech. You know what kind of trouble you're in? We're talking the big house here. Disrupting a speech? <laughs> I wish it was that simple. Oh, God, not again. Disrupting a speech is just the cover. These people are devious. They're ruthless. You have to learn to think like them. 
Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> maybe I am going to do some time. But it's worth it. Worth it? Wise up, you sap. Sure, it's, it's worth it. It worked, didn't it? Got rid of all the Martians, didn't I? How about those Iranian troop movements, huh? Quite a coincidence, isn't it? Will you just get out of here? How can I get out of here when you got me strapped into these things? Not you. Not me. No, not a coincidence, my friend. Will you just shut up? You didn't say anything. Not you, you idiot. The Martians. The Martians? What about the Russians? In fact, how about them Dodgers? There's no Martians around here. I got rid of all the Martians by playing my music. <laughs> that case in wing B, get the net. Oh, oh, again, uh, let's enter my nose. Can you scratch my nose for me, please? The defendant is remanded to psychiatric evaluation. I object! I object! <laughs> Large red suppositories. That ought to hold her nurse. Oh, Sarah. Hello, oh, Doctor. Is that for me? Oh, no, that's for Mark. Oh. Has there been any change? Oh, I'm sorry, not yet. But you mustn't give up hope, Sarah. We're doing everything known to medical science. We have removed a uh, wart from his foot and several ingrown toenails. His foot? Well, yes. You'd be surprised how often ingrown toenails drive people crazy. How long have you been a psychiatrist? Psychiatrist? Oh, no. I'm a podiatrist, a foot doctor. You see, Sarah, during this mental health care shortage, some of us from other fields have had to move in and take up the slack. Why well, can't he even hear him or see him? It's an extreme case of denial. You see, he doesn't want there to be Martians. So as far as his conscious mind is concerned, there are no Martians. But just because he hasn't responded to treatment yet, don't give up hope. We still have a few cards to play. Hi. Sarah. Dr. Kaplan. Come on in. How are you guys? We're fine, Mark. How about yourself? Oh, I'm good. Getting a lot of work done. The feet are good. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so nice and quiet here. Doctor, do you think that we could have just a little time alone together? Of course. Excuse me. Goodbye, Dr. Kaplan. Bye. Honey, look what I got you. Oh, Sarah. Oh. 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 Sarah, they took my other one away in jail. I made you something. I was going to weave you a basket, but I decided I'm better at this. Far away? Do you know far away? Hello? I had a dog who could sing like that. I had to shoot her. Thank you. We got your number. Hey, pal. Keep the day job. Hey, look at that nurse. Nurse. Everyone would stay on their own planet. We wouldn't need some UFO to tell us what to do. Everyone would stay on their own planet. I'd like to stay on this one here with you. Mark, that was beautiful. Thanks. Oh, you poor thing. You really can't see them, can you? The Martians? Sure I do. What? I didn't have any choice, Sarah. I tampered with a major presidential address. <laughs> if I didn't come here, I'd be in jail right now, lifting weights and joining the Muslims. That's no kind of life for me. Well, now what? I don't know. Do you still think playing the music backwards will make them leave? Sure. Good. I have a plan. Yeah. I have a truck full of equipment parked out front. We have to move fast. Why? Because it's all stolen. Okay. Let's see. Not that it's not funny. It's just that it's not funny. Ah! Ah! Green man! 
out. Oh, outer space aliens. Oh, space invaders. Congratulations, oh. Doctor. Get cured. Thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Oh, the toenail therapy works. It works. Oh, oh, get them away from me. Take me home. Oh, don't let them get on me. Oh, 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 oh. 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 Short out, and you're going to look like Tracy Chapman. Mm -hmm. Would you just let her work? What are you so afraid of, huh? <laughs> that part there. That's not even grounded. One false move, we're all French toast. Just ignore the money. I'm trying to, dear. You're going to have a phasing problem like you would not believe. Okay. I think we can try it. Yeah? Yeah, I've got the dishes outside pointed towards two different satellites. When I push this button here, we'll be jamming hundreds of different radio stations. We can monitor a bunch of them right here, AM, FM, and shortwave. You want to try it out? Yeah. Tell me when. I can't remember it. I, I, I can't remember it forward, so I can't play it backwards. Just needs a little help concentrating. Concentration, guys. One, two, three. Shirley, Shirley, Bo Burley, Bo Nana, Fanta, Bo Burley, B5, Bo Burley. Oh, 
Ba-dum-ba-dum-bum. <clears throat> Hello. Mark, you're home. Thank God. Huh? The, 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 the green scumbags are gone. Is that fabulous? Stan, it's wonderful. We're sitting here having a normal life. It's great. I had a huge, huge, enormous idea for a fabulous new game show. I pulled right over. I had to call you. Listen to this. The divorce game. Is that fabulous or what? Oh. This is the beauty part. They're competing for their own houses, uh, uh, furniture, life savings, uh, you know, all that stuff. So the prize overhead is like, it's nothing. Well, Stan, it sounds like a really great idea, but uh, I don't think I'm interested in that kind of work anymore. No, no, I've uh, hooked up with some guys I used to play with, and we're going to try the club circuit for a while, see if we can come up with some gigs. I see. Okay. Well, no, I, cert I understand perfectly. Well, you take care of yourself, Stan. Okay, babe. You too. Bye-bye. Schmuck.
Venus. Oh, well enough, enough, never worry, darling. No, well, no, 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 no,